we are. Hi. Sorry, okay, I got distracted. I got distracted by books. All right, let me see if I can flip this around. Can we switch? Flip it around. Yay! Ah, how'd I get over there? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not over there. You're over there. Oh, no, you're oh, over there. Oh. <laughs> Alrighty. Oh All right. my goodness. All right. So now everything should be correct. And there's yes. our first book. Oh, so cute. cute. I know. I know. Um, oh my goodness. Hot tis tis the season. So more. Adorable. There are more holiday books. Um, I actually had just read two of the ones that we featured a couple weeks ago. The Halloween one, the X Hex. Okay. That Excellent. one was really really good. It's really fun to get. Seasoned. There's actually there's actually a long wait list for that one. See, people want to be in the in the mood. And then the one that I finished Halloween. last night was the Matzo Ball. Oh, actually, sounds... very cute. Yeah. Good. Really really cute. I just returned it, and nobody was waiting for it, so it is sitting on our shelves. And that was a Hanukkah. Yeah. All right, perfect. It was really really. It was the one that was very Hallmarky. I was like, well, well obviously yeah, yeah. somebody who loves Christmas, and her publisher is asking her to write about Hanukkah. But it actually is really great because it's just all about like knowing who you are and where you come from and honoring the traditions that your family has and you know nice. of course like her arch enemy of course is the love interest but it's very sweet how they reconnect and i thought the matzo ball was really good so that's on our I shelves right now it's really good it. and i totally think that hallmark could pick it up as a movie so hallmark, <laughs> hallmark if, if you're listening, listening librarians know what they're talking about we do <laughs> we totally do um, so yeah, so this this week's holiday installment is so Best in looking. Snow by Dazen, David Rosenfeld. Um, these are the Andy Carpenter mysteries, and Look they're at all. This dog. Look at all her I can't even out. take it. I yep. can't even take how cute it is. Um, so this is more than twenty. There are more than twenty Andy Carpenter novels, and they all have uh, the the dogs in them. Uh, the last one, which was Dog Eat Dog. But last year's holiday one was called Silent Bite. Silent <laughs> Bite. Holy <laughs> Bite. bite. <laughs> bite. <laughs> um, and these are always really popular. Um, so if you love mysteries and you love animals and you would like to get hooked on a long-running series, you can check out the Andy Carpenter that mysteries. That really good. Yeah. Um, this is a brand new one from Elizabeth Strout. This is called O William. I'm sure this one will have plenty of holds. Um, this is, she wrote the, um, Olive Kitteridge book. Oh. Um, what was the most recent one? My name is Lucy Barton, Olive again. So I don't know if this takes place as part of the same. Yes, this is also part of the Lucy Barton, okay. uh, universe. Well, she's a Pulitzer Prize winner, so. I know. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> um, <laughs> whoa. Uh, Pulitzer Prize winner, Elizabeth Strout explores the mysteries of marriage and the secrets we keep. As a formal cu former couple, it's too early. We don't usually do this until after we eat, yeah, we're but we've got some scheduling things, so we're hungry. Our energy is depleted. I can't speak. I'm sorry. <laughs> so it's worse. Is, is it? We're not. Ha I'm not hangry. I'm just depleted. Weak. Just, just weak. Weak. <laughs> weak. <laughs> um, a former couple reckons with where they've come from and what they've led be left behind. Uh, Lucy Barton is a writer, but her ex-husband, William, remains a hard man to read. William, she confesses, has always been a mystery to me. Another mystery is why the two have remained connected after all these years. They just are. So Lucy is both surprised and not surprised when William asks her to join him on a trip to investigate a recently uncovered family secret. One of those secrets that rearrange everything we think we know about the people closest to us. What happens next is nothing less than another example of what Hilary Mantle has called Elizabeth Strout's perfect attunement to the human condition. Fears, insecurities, joys, acts of tenderness, and revelations about affairs and other spouses, parents, and their children. Oh On every page of this exquisite novel, I love exquisite. that, exquisite, we learn more about the quiet forces that hold us together even after we've grown up. Uh, so for everybody who has loved Lucy Barton or any of her works, you will love this one. Uh, so. mm -hmm. um, and then this one I chose to feature just because it's like a different place than where we normally go. This is The Ballad of Laurel Springs by Janet Beard. And Interesting cover. It is um, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. um, the internationally best-selling author of Atomic City Girls, a provocative new novel about multiple generations of women in one eastern Tennessee family haunted by violence and redeemed by their rich inheritance of folk music. Oh. So that sounded interesting, yeah. just a little different than kind of, I feel like, what we've been seeing. Um, 
10-year-old Grace is in search of a subject for her fifth grade history project when she learns that her fourth great-grandfather once stabbed his lover to death. <gasps> oh my goodness. That's like a heck of a thing for a fourth grader to learn. <laughs> his grisly act was memorialized in a murder ballad, her aunt tells her, so it must be true. But the lessons of that revelation, to be careful of men in desire, are not just graces to learn. Her family's tangled past is part of a dark legacy in which the lives of generations of women are affected by the violence immortalized in folk songs like The Knoxville Girl and Pretty Polly, reminding them always to know their place or risk the wages of sin. Whoa. Uh, Janet Beard's stirring novel, informed by her love of these haunting ballads, vividly imagines these women, defined by the secrets they keep, the revelations they uncover, and the lurking sense of menace that follows them throughout their lives. So I thought this was just something That's totally different. unique. We haven't really heard anything like this before. Um, and that it is, it comes from something that the author is personally interested in, I thought could be really cool and very interesting. My daughter um, might like that. She likes yeah. folk music. She's into like American folk music. She's they so say music. that it is lyric, atmospheric, and deeply moving, an exploration of legacies, music, and faith. Um, a stunning book. Hmm. Um, I'll have to ask her. The set of resonant violence of family secrets to the music of the mountains, tender and gritty. So I thought it just sounds really interesting. And like I said, totally unique. Yeah, definitely. And um, the cover's different. I like yeah, it. yeah. Um, and in a location I feel like we don't usually yeah. go to. Um, so oh the my last... gosh, I my know... Nona. <laughs> this is the lady I want to be my Nona. Really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Can you guess who she wants to be her Nona? Um, the last three books <laughs> that I have are nonfiction, and they are all cookbooks. But none of them are from Hungry. Nona except this one. Hungry. Let's see it. Um, Marie. Spammed. We got spam. Okay. Um, a pot, a pan, and a bowl. Simple recipes for perfect meals. I love her. Lydia. Oh, Lydia. And she just, everything is always so homey. Oh, and look at I that. just was like, why can't I go to her house? Look at that. Lentil and pasta soup, spicy seafood, sauerkraut Aww. bean and pork soup. Tummy's growling. Uh, summer minestrone. Wedding soup, I love that. Yeah, wedding soup. My mom makes a wedding soup mm. and it's delicious. Okay. Cauliflower and tomato soup. And I like that just, you know, in keeping with who Lydia is, there's the Italian is underneath each one of them. Of course. <laughs> of course. Ooh, what is this? Spinach and Fontina casserole. Oh, my goodness. That looks delicious. Would there's you like to some see? kind of sausage or something in there. It looks Look at that. So good. Yeah, that is... That's a casserole my family I actually spinach like. Eggs, <laughs> spinach, eggs, scallions, peas, grana padana, mm. Fontina. Oh. That was good. Amazing. Yeah. She's just... Everything is like just good. There's not good. too many just complicated good. things. It's just good. And then there's like a whole section on the tools that she thinks are important for the kitchen. Um, ooh, chocolate chip ricotta cookies. <gasps> those look amazing. Right, no, no, I'll take those. <laughs> yes, please. Look at that. Oh, That's basically good. like a cannoli cookie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Without the, there's no like orange or anything. Oh, okay, well, it still. depends on where in Italy, but we, uh, we do like the orange, really the candied good. orange or the yeah. orange water. Red wine, poached pears. Mm. Oh. Skillet tuna with eggplant and zucchini in a puttanesca sauce. Wow. Skillet shrimp. Yeah, nothing is too complicated, but looks just super delicious. Ooh, one pan chicken and eggplant parmigiana. Mm. How could you pick between the two? So you don't have to. I'm just going to cook everything. I'm just eggplant everything. and chicken parmesan. Um, and now here, okay, this totally is who I want to be my Nona. World. This is who I want to be. <laughs> She's awesome. Um, She's it's the too. Pioneer Woman, super easy, 120 shortcut recipes for dinners, desserts, and more. Um, I can feel my pants getting tighter just, yeah, it's true. just does, holding this book. Because yeah, it's yeah. all like comfort food. Yeah, she does and a lot it's, of comfort it's, food. Oh, look at that. Pizza and sandwiches is what I just flipped to. Oh, but you know what? This, she lives you know, in the middle of nowhere. Broccoli so they and own... cheese stromboli. Oh, that sounds good. Oh, boy. Yeah, she's got some Pasta nice comforting and grains. Foods. Sheet pan gnocchi. Again, nothing too complicated. It's pretty One it's pretty pot sausage pasta. Oh, boy. Well, that looks kind of healthy. Yeah. Very green. Green or risotto. Ah, instead of risotto. Oh, like a risotto. Oh. So it's a little easier to make. Risotto can be a little bit, a little I bit like of work. Making risotto. I, I watched a um, one of the chefs 
whose cookbook I featured on Book Cooks a couple of times, Michelle Smith, she did like a live cookbook session on YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, and we made, not we, I didn't cook <laughs> one because I don't have an Instant Pot, but she did Instant Pot pumpkin risotto. And she Ooh. showed how using the pressure cooker, you can get the starches out of the arboreal mm -hmm. rice. Ooh. And it only took like seven minutes. She was like, okay, now I'm staring at the camera. What am I going to do? But it was, it was very quick. Wow. So okay, yeah, because usually it's the label. You can make, well, usually you can make, the I've done it that way yeah. before, yeah. Or you can do Pioneer Woman Redrone has, has it. Orzo. Yeah, which similar. is nice. It is a similar. It's possible. Low effort lasagna. How about no effort now? <laughs> we can't go any lower. Fish stick tacos. What is this? This is some, this is some kind of jalapeno cornbread. This That's looks what that amazing. That looks like a skillet cornbread. Oh, tamale pie. Oh, That's what that. Oh, right. I'll show you. That looks amazing. It's beautiful. Look at that. That's what I want for lunch. Is that what I have for lunch today? No, I don't think no. so. I'm thinking. I think I have chicken salad for lunch. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. But yeah, uh, she's 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 pretty awesome. She makes everything bread. look very easy too. Yeah. Does she That's have why I like her. Oh, cheesy green bean casserole. Sheet pan meatloaf. I feel like she probably already has a separate cookbook for desserts. Oh, I want some lazy desserts, Ree. Come on. Yeah. Oh, oh, there, there it, is. it is. The best chocolate poke cake. Ooh, Ooh poke cake, huh? Cinnamon mm. apples, that's good for you. Blackberry icebox cake, that's cute. Mug cakes, my favorite. Yeah, look at her. She's just always, that's why I like her. Everything's cozy Gingerbread with her. mug cake. So, oh. here we go. Super easy Pioneer Woman Cookbook. I know these are always really popular. And also always very popular, Dory Greenspan. Dory has another Baking with Dory book. Sweet, salty, oh. and simple. Oh, my goodness. Okay, my look at that. is now grilling. Right, but I have, chicken, I have chicken salad for lunch. I don't want that. I want this apricot and pistachio olive oil cake. Oh, with a cup of coffee? That would be amazing. Ooh. That would be perfect. Oh, boy. Oh, my god. No, I'm not familiar with Dory. Oh, uh, is it always Dory, baking stuff, or does yeah, she do regular Dory is, too? like, very well known for her baking Just recipes baking. Okay. and cookies. We have a couple, okay. so you got to go check them out. Um, right. Caramel apple crisp. Little marbles. Mm. What is a little marble? I need dessert. Some kind of like <laughs> It's a little marvel. <laughs> Ooh, Ooh, chocolate eclairs. Wow. That looks very chocolatey. And yep. Super delicious. Yep. Um, so, you know, a lot of people like to bake for the holiday season, whether you're celebrating a holiday or you just have time off and you're going to spend it with friends and family. Food. Um, <laughs> yeah, bring food. Mm -hmm. Bring food. Coffee shortbread. Ooh. Again, I I'm love shortbread. Coffee and some kind of little dessert. I just. I'm oh. set. Boy, what are these? Mocha nuts, rye, cranberry, chocolate chunk cookies. Rye. Interesting. That's very unique. All right. That is definitely different for a cookie. But also simple things uh, like marbled cheesecake. So there's just a, a whole lot of different recipes in here. Ones that maybe you've never tried. A big banana cake. Um, or things that are new. Buttermilk molasses quick bread. Ooh. Oh my gosh, carrot muffins. Oh, I'm hungry. Oh, what are these delicious. biscuits? Potato flake biscuits. That's what it all sounds. Cheese swirl babka buns. That's that's it. That's the last one I'm gonna show you because okay. this a babka. She tells you how to make your own brioche dough to make it. Oh my god. Okay, yeah. I am sufficiently uh, hungry. Anyway, these are all available in our adult new section. Marie is gonna show you some of her books, and I'm just gonna drool on top of this book. I'm going to start with the bigger kid books today because okay. I'm saving these. There's some beautiful pictures. There's some very nice some ones really today, nice yeah. Ones. This one is The Care and Keeping of Freddie by Susan Hill Long. Had great reviews. Um, Georgia Weathers Worries... I'm sorry. Georgia Weathers Worry Machine has been on full blast since her mom, Blythe, took off in Lyle Lazinski's blue sedan. Earlier that same day, Blythe gave Georgia a bearded dragon named Freddie. Georgia is convinced that if she loves Freddie enough, Blythe will come home. Oh, no. Aww. So this is like a broken home story, um, but with a very cute cover. Uh, Georgia isn't the only one in the family with predicaments. Um, her friend Mar Maria Garcia's parents have merrily moved out of their house and into a camper in the yard. Roland Park is the new boy in town. As a kid in the foster care system living with the Farley family, he's sure to stay. his sure his stay is temporary. And when the three friends discover an abandoned glass house in the forest, it becomes their secret hideout, a place of their own, free of parents and problems. 
The glass can be broken. Oh. Ooh. Really? So, and it's just got really cute, uh, diverse kind of cast with the, plus a dragon, bearded dragon. Plus a bearded so, dragon, which I think is adorable. Yeah, I think this sounds like a really good one. And this one had really great reviews too. Baraka Beats mm -hmm. by Malia Siddiqui. Oh, I feel like I know her from something. Um. No, I guess not. Okay, I thought maybe she had. Well, maybe she's been on TV talking about her book. Yeah, it's anyway, getting a lot of a yeah, lot this of one's been press, a lot of buzz. buzz. Yeah. Um, I can't afford to not to be myself. Not in middle school. Not if I want to make new friends. Now that could really be any kid's uh -huh. dilemma, right? If yeah. you're yourself, you won't make friends. Um, but in this case, the girl feels even more um, like she's standing out because she has started to wear a hijab in school, and um, some other friends are giving her the cold shoulder. So she has to decides to join a boy band, which oh. her parents would definitely not be okay with. <laughs> so it's a joyful tale about faith, friendship, and being true to yourself, featuring a proud Muslim girl who finds the courage to pursue the things that truly make her heart sing. I'm very intrigued because it's gotten really great reviews, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it's definitely it a different type of character, um, and uh, sort of an own voices kind of story, which I think is great. So. Yeah. I love to see the, the trend uh, in middle grade and young adult novels about, um, you know, a lot. there's a lot of like, oh, I'm too cool for my religion and my culture. And now there are a lot more about like embracing it and mm -hmm. being proud. And that's such a wonderful thing. Yeah. So I think that's going to be a really good one. And I can't wait to find out. And this one, um, <laughs> as with the adult books, the children's books have had a lot of World War II stories as well. This one is called The Swallow's Flight. And it is the story of two sets of friends, um, Eric and Hans, who admire swallows over the rooftops of Berlin, and Ruby and Kate, who live in England. Um, and so it's basically about how war affects children and their, their lives. And um, I think it's going to be really, it got another one with great, great reviews. Um, so I think, yeah, I think this will be a, a hot one. Uh, and then this one is another World War II book called Faceless by Karen, Catherine Lasky. She's a pretty popular kid's author. Um, she, she wrote like the Guardians of Gahul, mm -hmm. uh, which was a really popular series with the owls in it. And this book, I love the cover because it just looks almost like a, like a comic book or yeah, something. It's, it's a unique. very different uh, cover to it. Um, and it just says, over the centuries, unbeknownst to all, a small clan of spies has worked ceaselessly to fight oppression. They are called the Tabula Rasa. They can pass unseen through enemy lines, eavesdrop on conversations, and become other people without being recognized. They're essentially faceless. Alice and Louise Winfield are sisters and spies in the Tabula Rasa. They are growing up in wartime England where the threat of Nazi occupation is ever near, but Louise wants to live an ordinary life, and she tires of spy missions. When she leaves the agency, Alice must face her most dangerous assignment yet without her sister by her side. Oh. So, yeah. Um, so I guess that's why there's the British flag in the background, and then there's this sort of dark, sort of war-torn uh, landscape. Very ominous. There. Yeah, sort of ominous looking. And so I think this will be very popular with our kids um, because they do still really like the World War II story. They do. It's yeah. a very popular time period for kids. Yeah. I, I think because um, they do learn about it pretty early on, I think. I guess, so. Yeah. So I'm gonna go. Okay, so I'm gonna go through now my picture books. There's three there that I picked up. Very, out. very nice ones today. Love this one. I've been waiting for this one. Shea Bob, um, by Bob Shea, <laughs> and uh, he is just hilarious. And Bob is this uh, alligator who decides to open up a restaurant so that he can attract birds to his mouth. Um, yeah, but things kind of go sideways, and um, and things don't always turn out like he thinks they're going to be. Um, and it's just treated with the same kind of humor and even some touchingness that uh, you come to expect from him. Let me see if I yeah, can find really it. The, the part you always that really expect something that's very, very funny. Whacked me up. Um, smart. As a small business owner, Bob wanted to be part of the community. He coached the bas basketball team. It's rewarding to be a positive role model for the birds I'm going to eat, thought Bob. <laughs> Since he was new in town, Bob joined a book club to meet some like-minded birds. He hit it off with everyone except the orange bird, who never will let anyone else talk. How rude, thought Bob. That Bob, I'm totally eating him first. Like it's just <laughs> really, really funny. Um, but as time goes on, of course, Bob becomes attached to his uh, oh. his perspective food. So, yeah, very funny. He's always I funny. The older kids really appreciate the humor. So, yeah. This one, Alyssa and I just already fell in love with. It's so Mem Fox cute. and Mark Teague. And it's called Cat Dog. 
And it says, uh, they're very simple here. There is a cat in this book. There's also a dog. And there's a whole lot of crazy stuff going on, right? And it's all about this dog and this cat and um, a mouse. There's also a mouse in the house. So, and it just has like the very cat-like and dog-like behavior. It's so funny. It's very, very funny. Um, I love the and, positions that they're yeah, in. Yeah, they're it's just totally the expressions true. on the on their faces. Look at the dog with the one ear. Um, yeah, the whoop. one ear, and the cat's like pointing at the dog, like oh, this dog. So it's very simple, but a lot going on in the pictures, and I think the kids will really appreciate the humor. Um, let's see if I can find the one that I really liked with the cat's face, making like a like a, a typical. This one. Cat face. I feel like all cats have this cat face. face. My cat made that face Side at me eye. the yeah. other day when I picked her up off the couch to put her in bed for bedtime. Yeah. It was, you know, 10 o'clock at night, she made that face. Yeah, this is the face. <laughs> I just think it's hysterical. So, and then on the end, there's a mouse in the middle. So, I love, hmm. you know, I'm not going to give away, What's but it's, gonna happen? it's very cute. It is really cute. And then this one I saved for last. Because I actually, when I first read the review of it, I was like, oh, I don't know. It, it just sounded like it might be sappy or something, and I didn't want sappy, but it's not sappy at all. It's called Hello Star. I knew the pictures would be beautiful because Vashti Harrison has done some beautiful mm -hmm. children's books. Um, she does like the little leaders and um, all those the books with like like biographies of famous people in them, um, and it's written by Stephanie. Oh boy, this is gonna be a hard name for me to say. Lucia Luke, Luke, Luke Vonnegut. Luke I'm sorry, I'm not sure. Did she do any books that I know? I don't recognize any of them. She has a few others, but anyway. So the premise of the book is a little girl looking out into the stars, and it's just gorgeous. And um, she finds out, I think she asks her mom, that what it, she's seeing is a supernova. It's a star dying. And um, the girl feels her heart pinch. And I just thought that was such a cute description of it. She feels her heart pinch at the thought of a dying star. And so... She learns everything she can about about stars, and um, she goes to college and becomes a scientist. And one day, not wasting money like some of the billionaires in our lives, oh. she decides she becomes an astronaut and she's going into space to actually do something to, to do something scientific, something moving, something beautiful, something. And so she goes out into space and sees that star closer. And um, yeah, I just, I loved it. And then when I read the author's note, uh, she says that six years ago, her son, son Henry asked me one day, did you know that stars die? Isn't that sad? And the striking empathy he had for a distant ball of gas turned on a light of inspiration within me. How might a child full of care and compassion react upon finding out that stars don't last forever? How would this realization drive their life? And out came this book. Hello, and Star. It's beautiful. The descriptions are beautiful. Yeah. The illustrations Stars are beautiful. Stars are waiting for you. And it's just sweet and yeah. thoughtful. It's, and I just love the whole idea of a kid growing up, like, and just that whole that thought that would be in their head forever. Like, I can't believe stars die. I wanted to see the star before yeah. it dies and how it really inspires. I don't know, I can see her poster has. She's made Jemison on the background. Aww. So just some great, um, just a great Look inspiring Stephen story. Hawking. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> oh, Look at the snow globe, yeah. A giant astronomy book. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just... I, I just thought that was so beautiful, and the illustrations are beautiful. So, yeah, uh, not at all what I expected. Much Very deeper nice. than yeah. I was expecting. So, yeah, really, really pleased Ooh. with that one. That's why the reviews were so good. It yeah. wasn't just the beautiful pictures. It's a beautiful story. Yeah. And that's it for today. That's it. We So we've got some nice pics. You can come visit us and grab some I'll new I'll be adding books. these today probably because they're all out today. They're so. all out, yep. Mm -hmm. We've got lots of new books, and they're very exciting. So come and visit us. These books and books from last week and... Books, have, books, books. I don't think we have any for next week yet, so uh -oh. we're going to do our usual, please please send us books. Usually we put that out into the universe and then if we If our books are sitting books. on a dock somewhere, can you put them to the They probably the are sitting on a dock somewhere. <laughs> yeah. That would be great. Just, I know. Just, yeah. Just get wait, to the top. Can't wait to get more books, so we'll see you next time for more books. Yep. Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Sit in.